What's up, guys? Welcome to another uh, Fight Talk with Ramblin' Rays. Um, today, the plan is we're going to cover two cards because I will be gone next week, and then the week after, we're both going to be gone on a fishing trip. Um, so today, we're going to cover the Reyes versus Prochaska. That's the fight on May 1st, which is in like two days. And then um, we're going to cover the Oliveira versus Chandler, which is May 15th. Uh, those are the two cars we're going to be covering and the Oliver Chandler looks stacked mm -hmm. I am excited for the Reyes Prochaska but I don't know that Oliver the Oliver Chandler is going to be fun it is it is um so first up Reyes versus Prochaska um we're going to be covering four fights four of the main card fights the very first one is the Cub Swanson versus Giga Chikazi so who you got on that one? I uh, I got Cub Swanson winning on that one. I do too. I'm picking Cub Swanson by decision. Cub Swanson's coming off that really impressive knockout. Yeah. Uh, he was back up back against the uh, fence. He like left hook, right up cutting a straight and knocked the dude out. Um, so he's coming off of a really because a lot of people were counting him out. He's like a veteran. He's an older guy when it comes to fighting. Like he's been around the block, you know. He's been at the top. He's been at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So some people were counting him out, and then he had that really nice knockout win, and people were like, "Oh, don't sleep on him." Yeah, I would uh, say knockout uh, round one. You think Cub gets a first round knockout? Yeah. I would love. I mean, I'd love to see that. I saw an interview. He's uh, like doubting everyone. He's showing why he's been around the UFC so long. So like, I think he's gonna try to prove himself and try to get like a crazy win. No, oh, that'd be that'd be nice. Yeah. I'm saying decision though, because uh, you know, Giga or Gija, however you pronounce his name, mm -hmm. um, is like a young guy. He's like trying to make his name in the UFC, you know. But usually, when they go up against a veteran, I feel like the veteran can use their experience to their advantage, and I feel like he could just like outlast them. Yeah, like I feel like he's got tricks up his sleeve that maybe Giga hasn't like hasn't developed yet maybe he doesn't have these like tricks or he doesn't know how to respond to certain things that cub does so i'm picking cub for that fight decision okay so next up we have ion kutabella and dustin jacoby so i say ion it could be ian dude it's spelled like ion so i'm yeah, going I'm ion. Say ion. but you know the dude who paints himself like yeah, hulk and just hulk. gets in people's face and i mean the dude's a savage um and dustin jacoby like i remember i was like i've heard that name before I, i'm like I, but i couldn't like put it together i'm like i've heard that name and like years ago i watched uh like a lot of glory kickboxing mm -hmm. and that's where i know his name from he was a kickboxer in glory kickboxing he was a pretty good kickboxer too and he's had like three or four fights in the ufc i just i haven't i guess seen that i haven't like yeah. kept up with him I, I didn't know that he had those fights um but i remember like he was tall long lanky and had like good power in his shots um I think he only. I think in kickboxing he went like ten and eight, ten wins, eight losses. Um, but I mean he's he's good. He is good. So awesome. The food's here. The food's here. Chick Fil A market salad. Yeah. Uh, Chick Fil A's here. So, anyways. Uh, so who do you got in that fight? I'm going eye on Kitabella, the Hulk. I think so too. Fight. I think yeah. so too. Um. Because for Dustin Jacoby, this is a leap up in competition, mm -hmm. you know, because he's ma he's making his way. The Hulk was already like up there, you yeah. know. He was he was fighting that Russian cat. His last two fights, or you know, they they like injuries kept happening, and it was and it was a weird the stoppage. One, yeah, lost the second one. The first one was questionable. I yeah. think the first one shouldn't have been called. The second one, he got starched. He, he got knocked out. He got put to sleep. Yeah. yeah, he got slept hard. So. Uh, I think he's a savage, though. Yeah, I think he's going to take this fight more seriously. I think he I put, definitely beat Dustin Jacoby. I'm, I'm kind of predicting a first-round knockout for him. But I feel like he might want to try to take it to the ground. I, I, I don't know if we've seen a lot of grappling from him. Because every time I see him, it's that, stand and bang. That one, I'll probably say decision. You're going to say decision? Yeah. I think I had a decision, and but then I was like, he's too savage. I'm like, he's going to come yeah. out swinging. I don't see him, like, taking his time. Mm -hmm. But I feel like... He's going to need a finish on the ground, most likely. Because yeah. Dustin Jacoby, I feel like he's going to, you know, like I said, he's come from that kickboxing background. He's going to have, I'm pretty sure he's got the height and length on him, too. I'm, uh, he's going to have the um, the advantage when it comes to that. And I feel like 
he'll be a good counter striker. Mm -hmm. So you have somebody who's a savage who marches forward, and you have somebody who could probably check left hook him. You know, oh, so they just put him out. But I'm still gonna go like Ian because this is a big challenge for Dustin Jacoby. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so the coming event. Uh, Sean Strickland versus Christoph Jaco. This isn't the coming event, but anyways, yeah, Sean Strickland versus Christoph Jaco. What's the coming event? I should have went Sean Strickland, Ian Kudabella, and then Cubs Oh. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Sean Strickland versus Christoph Jaco. You having that fight? Um, I have Christoph Jaco winning that fight. Oh yeah, we talked about this. Yeah. yeah. I think he has the reach and height advantage, and also he has, um like a variety of wins like by submission decision okay. TKO KO and I've, I've like he's been around for a minute too his yeah, name his name's been Sean Strickland though you know he's he's a newcomer and um I'm a fan of his that last one he had against, that last one he had against Jack dude I like his style too where it's almost kind of Philly shell it's like it's boxing heavy but he also has the you know he's he has like MMA mixed in there, but it's like mainly a boxing focus. And he reminded me of like um, Trailblazer in there, dude. He reminded me of Kevin Holland, the way he was talking, you know, and like just having fun. Oh yeah. And like those kind of guys who can have fun, and who could just let loose. Yeah. yeah. They're like, dangerous. Yeah. Um, they're very dangerous. So I'm gonna be rooting on Sean Strickland. I'm saying maybe like a second round knockout, Sean Strickland. Okay. That's what I'm going for. Um, I'll probably say third round KO TKO by Jacko. Okay, Jacko. Mm -hmm. And then the main one, Reyes versus Prochaska. Oh, actually, I'm gonna change instead of a oh, KO. I'm gonna do a submission. Submission. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's a good pick. Because I I think Strickland's mainly a boxer. He's not. I don't think he'll outbox him, but he'll want to take him down and try to submit him. Yeah, that's a good pick. I agree with that change. Uh, if I was going to Jack, I'd go submission too. Uh, for the main event, Dominic Reyes versus Prochaska. So, Jacob last week, he you didn't remember the Prochaska. No. He's only had one fight in the UFC. Jacob didn't remember it. And it's um, he his first fight in the UFC. It's one of those guys who was kind of thrown into the spotlight. You know, kind of like Michael Chandler. Like, they throw him, they throw him in and then he's fighting Dan Hooker, you know. Dan Hooker, obviously deserve that step up but mm -hmm. like Prochaska me personally I hadn't heard of him but evidently this dude was like on a hot streak and entertaining and I remember watching it live he fought he fought um Ozdemir Ozdemir yeah Vulcan Ozdemir and um dude it was a wild fight yeah it, it was, was a crazy fight it was a great fight like both guys just rocking each other like Prochaska did get tagged a few times um and then he ends up knocking out um Ozdemir, he knocked out Ozdemir in the second round, and I remember thinking like, dude, he he's got a very like very much so high risk, high reward style, mm -hmm. like very high risk, high reward. He, he keeps his hands low. He does a lot of funky movement. He does a lot of the, you know, like, like looking, twists. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He'll look off and like fight like that. He kept doing that weird, weird thing. I thought he, he like, was grab his wrist. Yeah, I guess it was to come up like with punches, but it just was bizarre. It was. But it worked. You know, and it was very entertaining to watch. And, like, the way he knocks out Ozdemir, like, he fakes the flying knee and then just tags him with the punch. Mm -hmm. Like, that's that's creative. It like, is. you know, that's, that's to, flake, to fake a flying knee like that just to get in to throw the punch, like, to throw a straight. Like, it's – um, so I feel like he could be – he could be if he if he beats Reyes and he's, he continues, he's gonna, be he's gonna be like a star in yeah. the UFC. You know, like he's he's gonna be definitely a star. Oh, whoever wins this is definitely gonna be up there in rankings. Um, and then Dominic Reyes, who is coming off a loss to uh, now champ um, Jan Blakovich. Jan Blakovich, like where he got I think it was like TKO in the second. Mm -hmm. Nose was badly shattered. Um, I mean, badly broken, and he he didn't have a moment in that fight really. Like mm -hmm. he he got he got knocked out bad, um, wobbled, stunned, everything before he went down. But so like I feel like a lot of people like they they remember you by your last performance. So a lot of people remember him for getting you know left hooked by the Polishman. But I 
I'm gonna go Reyes winning this. Okay. I'm going Reyes winning this. I think it's gonna be a fun fight, but Reyes is like an expert. He's one of the best in the game right now at knocking people out while he's moving backwards. He's so good at knocking people out moving backwards. He knocked out Chris Weidman going backwards with a straight. He tagged uh, John Jones with an uppercut. Like, and that's what, you know, I'm still holding on to that, dude. He did beat John Jones. In my yeah. mind, in a lot of people's minds, it was three rounds to two. Um, a lot of people think Dominic Reyes. So I'm, I'm holding on to that performance. Maybe I shouldn't be, like, over his last one getting knocked out. Um, but, I mean, like, that's, despite being a loss, that's like a highlight of your career to do that to John Jones, the way he did that. Um, but with John Jones, he was fading back as John Jones was coming in. Big right uppercut. He, he throws his uppercut a lot where he's backing up. And he'll cut an angle while he's backing up. And he'll throw an uppercut, yeah. and um, he'll connect clean and, and and just like put people out. So he's put out Chris Weidman moving backwards. He put out um, what's the killer gorilla? What's his name? Um, um, my memory is shot today. I literally just saw like, not Clara actually. No, um, no. What is his name? Killer gorilla. This is gonna drive me crazy. Yeah, I can't think. Um, but you know. The Killer Gorilla, which is his nickname, started in heavyweight, then went down to light heavyweight, then now is at middleweight as like a contender. And um, at light heavyweight, he fought Dominic Reyes, and Dominic Reyes, again, knocked him out, moving backwards. He's got like three or four good knockout finishes moving backwards. And when you have somebody like Prochaska, who's like, you know, Prochaska comes forward a mm -hmm. lot, I feel like he could counter him. I feel like the counters might be a big... A big factor in this fight, but Reyes is going to get tagged a few times. Yeah, I think so. Because Prochaska is like very unorthodox. That throws a lot of guys off. Mm -hmm. Very unorthodox. As you look up the Killer, killer Gorilla, um, I'm saying Prochaska's going to win. Because one, Reyes couldn't finish. Uh, Jared Cannonier. That's his name. Yeah. I was wondering. It was this one. Yeah, but you know, Jared Reyes didn't finish Ozdemir. He, he won by a decision. Yeah. But it took him all the way to decision. Prochaski knocked him out. And I feel like that's hard to uh, defeat Ozdemir like that. Because Ozdemir yeah. is a unit. He's a tank. Yeah, I get that. So I'm going to say Prochaski. Um, but you also know MMA math doesn't yeah. work. I would, I would still use that in my argument if I was going Prochaska, but like. MMA math just doesn't make sense. I just think he's got more power than Reyes. You think he's more power than Reyes? Yeah. Mm. See, I was going to say they're equal in power. It's just Prochaska might land because he throws weird and unorthodox yeah. techniques you can't see coming. But I feel like if, like, pound for pound, like, strength compared, I feel like they're the same. I feel like they got the same power. Because Reyes knocks people out too, you know? Yeah. It's just the fight he fought with uh, Ozdemir was like a – was a weird one. Mm -hmm. It was a weird fight for him. Um, and Prochaska was just going balls to the wall. Yeah. Because see, you could also say, well, Dominic Reyes didn't really get rocked by Ozdemir. Prochaska got rocked by Ozdemir, you know? That's true. That's true. But, no, I could definitely see why somebody would go with Prochaska on that fight. Like, yeah. he, he's, he's got he, star he's potential. A risk, uh, like you said, a risk reward type. High risk, high reward yeah. for sure. Um, I don't know how, though. I, I want to say decision. A decision? Mm -hmm. I would love to see a decision, but I think second round TKO knockout for my for my pick. Yeah, it was first going uh, first round KO for Jessica, but I think Reyes is... I think he'll get caught, but I don't think he'll get put out. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's that card. That's May 1st. I think the winner of the Reyes versus Prochaska... I think they should fight that Russian cat who who just starched Ion uh, Cutabella. I feel like they should either fight him or they're going to be up there. They're going to be up there towards title contention, you know. Um, but I feel like they might have to fight that Russian dude, the winner of that. Um, okay, so moving forward. May 15th, we've got the big card that everybody, everybody's talking about. Um, this is the one everybody wants to see. Uh, for the lightweight title, 155-pound title, Michael Chandler versus Charles Oliveira. Ooh. 
that's that's the big one. Do you want to start with the big one, or do you want to start I said from we will, bottom? Bottom up, yeah. Okay, so the first fight that we're going to cover is the Shane Burgos versus Edson Barbosa. It's at 145. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, again, we were going through watching old fights. We watched, like, Conor McGregor versus Nate, too. We watched... Um, like the Prochaska versus Ozdemir fight. Gagey versus uh, My, uh, Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson. And then another one we, uh, I was telling Jacob about, because it almost got fought of the year, it was a contender, was Josh Emmett versus Shane Burgos. Because um, it was like a all-out brawl. Mm -hmm. And what I got from that fight, dude, was Shane Burgos has got a he chin. Does. That, I mean, he, the dude's got a chin on I mean, I, that's why I'm going for him with this fight. You're going Shane Burgos yeah. on this fight? I think I'm going Shane Burgos. Okay. Yeah, dude, he, I mean, he took, he was taking overhands from Josh Emmett that Josh Emmett hit Michael uh, Michael Johnson with, and Michael Johnson went stiff. Yeah. And he took multiple, multiple, multiple ones. And rounds. Yeah. I mean, it was, that was a brawl. That was a crazy fight. So, respect for Burgos. I mean, the dude goes to war. Um, and Edson Barbosa, he's, he's looking, yeah, you know, 145, he's looking to, like, get back for title contention. I mean, he's still going for that belt. Um, I think I'm going to go Edson Barbosa, strictly because of his kicking techniques. Yeah. I think he's just such a strong kicker. I think he catches Shane, um, whether it's to the bottom. I mean, honestly, if I was from Edson Barbosa's camp, I'd be looking at, like, hey, let's aim at the legs and body because yeah. the chin um, is, is uh, you know, maybe, like, throw some head kicks later on once you've established the leg kicks and the body once kicks. Once you've tied him out and he can't walk, then go to the head. Because the dude can absorb, like, yeah. punches – to the head like no one got like, a yeah at 145 that dude's got a chin on him okay so you're saying you're saying Shane Burgos how yeah. um I don't know I don't know how because I envision knockout but now that you're saying that I uh, I can't see him knocking Edson Barbosa out um Probably go decision. Decision? Yeah. Shane Burgos? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm going to go Edson Barbosa. Um, I think it's either going to be a decision or like a third round knockout. Like I said, if he, if he, almost like a Shif Shifchenko versus Jessica I, where she kept kicking her in the body and then the second round came up high. Yeah. And then we'll go Edson Barbosa, either a third round TKO or a um, decision. Either way, like, that's the start of the main card, and that's a That's going to be a good fight, yeah. Dude, I'm looking forward to that fight so bad. It could end anyway. Yeah. Like, I could also see him end KO round one. Like, yeah. I mean, they, they're... Because I can see them coming out, like, hard at each other, dude. Yeah. Like, they, they're coming out, like, swinging and banging. Ooh, that's a fun one. Okay. Either way, that fight's going to be good. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, that's, that that could be fight of the night. Well, I mean, I, I don't want to say that just yet though, because there's a lot of good there's a lot of good yeah. fights on this card, but maybe could potentially be an underlooked fight of the night, you know, contender. Because then right after that we got Tony Ferguson versus Benyel De Rouge. Dude, Benyel De Rouge is uh, he's he's coming up, man. He is. I mean, he's he like he's one of those guys who, because you know, like for a long time I could only remember him, and it sucks as a fan to remember a fighter only by like their worst moment but I could only remember him for getting like flying kneed by Edson Barbosa yeah. and like just being viciously just unconscious you know um but dude but now he uses that to his advantage he gets yeah. rocked and just he turns into Chris Lieben yeah, exactly. he turns into Chris Lieben where he gets rocked and he just starts swinging back come back he's I mean he's a comeback king dude mm -hmm. um I'm going Tony Ferguson on this fight though yeah. I feel pretty confident in my pick for Tony Ferguson in this fight. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe he, at some point, catches Darius, has him rocked, has him wobbled, and then I think he's going to finish the fight with a submission. Okay. I'll say second round. I'm going to say second round also, but by TKO. I feel like he's going to rock him, drop him, and just... Follow with those nasty elbows? Yeah. yeah. I would love for that fight to go to decision, though. I would love for that fight. Oh, yeah. If that went to the decision, that would be amazing. I would love for all these fights to go to yeah. decision Honestly. for this card because they would they would all just be just wars, dude. Wars of attrition. like, 4 in the morning, but, like, it'd be worth it. Oh, dude, it'd be good. It would be good. 
that fight that that fight's fun it's also very important for uh it's very important for tony ferguson mm -hmm. it's important for both guys because darius you know he's 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 coming up he's trying to prove himself I, they made this fight because darius wanted a big name so he could get you know in that top five and then they're also giving a fight for tony ferguson that is winnable yeah. but it's also exciting you know it's not no disrespect to darius it's just it's winnable for tony you know mm -hmm. um and they're just gonna be it's a fun fight it's a fun fight i'm looking forward to it hopefully it, it, i mean that one again could be fight of the night it could um or a finish of the night you know darius could get rocked by tony and then come back just like he has been these last few fights mm -hmm. and catch tony but i don't i don't see tony going out i see tony going him getting hit by gaethje multiple times and not going out and he i don't yeah, think man. darius can take him out that's bad that would, Oof. Yeah. Uh, I think, let's see. I mean, hopefully he's, rec he's recovered from Gaethje and Oliveira. I believe he probably will because he's a madman. He's a beast, but still. I feel like him being a madman tear. sometimes, yeah. That's what sucks is the wear and tear because he, he doesn't take – he just trains hard. I feel like he's one of these guys. I mean, he's kicking metal poles and elbowing damn moving cars to, <laughs> to be as tough as he can, you know. like. Yeah. And at some point, dude, you are breaking your body down. Uh I still think he, you know, I still think some people think he's done in the fight game. I don't think so. No. Um, but I, honestly, we're gonna see with this fight. You know, we're gonna see if he's actually done with it or not. If if he is done, bare knuckle boxing is gonna sign that dude tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like as soon as he loses, they're they're gonna be waiting there because that's right up his alley. But I was looking at um, I was looking at Edson Barbosa's or not Edson Barbosa, Darius, and he's got. He's riding on a win against Tiago Moises. And then he's got a win on Drew Dober by submission triangle. Uh, Frank Camacho, another submission. Uh, Drakkar Close, the, you know, the guy who just got TKO'd without even fighting. Um, Jeremy Stevens, because for some reason Jeremy Stevens gets mad and just yeah. pushes people at weigh-ins. Um, that was that, like, really good knockout. Then he beat Scott Holtzman. Then he beat uh, Carlos Diego Ferreira. And that dude is game. Mm -hmm. And he won a split decision on that one. So he's in a six-fight win streak. So this this is a big deal for him. This yeah. is a big deal. It's a big step up in competition, and it's a big deal. I don't know if he'll give them a title shot after this, but, I mean, that's a big win streak. I, they he's, will not give him a title he'll shot. He'll be up there, though. He'll be up there, but he will, they he will not. Shot, yeah. Dan Hooker, probably. It'll be Dan Hooker versus Benio De Roche. Ooh, I'd like to see that, too. Or they could make Dan Hooker versus either one of these guys. Yeah. Tony Ferguson's coming off two losses. Um... You know, one to Justin Gaethje, one to Charles Oliveira, who's the main event. Mm -hmm. um, neither one, really, like, you can... Neither one is, like, you should be down on yourself yeah, for. They're both amazing fighters. Yeah, and he at one they're point he dropped contenders. Gaethje. At yeah. one point he dropped... He didn't have a moment in the Charles Oliveira, Oliveira fight, I'll say that. But he did drop Justin Gaethje. He landed some good shots in that fight. Um, it just... You know, he's... I mean, Gaethje was looking on fire that night. So that's what both, you know, that fight, that fight has high stakes, very high stakes. Yeah. And, okay, so next up at 170, we have Leon Edwards versus Nate Diaz. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I have a very unpopular opinion of this fight. Yeah. I think Leon Edwards is going to beat Nate Diaz. I feel like these kind of fights are usually the ones that the, they like Nate Diaz loses, mm -hmm. you know. But like he'll, he'll he'll shock you every once in a while, dude. Like he he will straight up shock you with some of the wins he gets. But I don't know, man. I think I I, I don't think people respect Leon, Leon Edwards, Edwards enough. He's a good striker. He's a very good striker. Yeah, I mean he's he's got all around. He's got a good game, like yeah. a great game. You know, I think you're gonna see him versus Kamara Usman probably soon. Mm -hmm. So like if they're rematched because they've already fought, but. I'm going Edwards. Either, oh, and the, oh, also I should mention this is the first coming event that's not a title fight. That's also five rounds. Oh, it's five rounds. It's five rounds. I know that. Yeah, they just made it up out of nowhere, which I'm not complaining. But they were like, "Oh, Nate Diaz is on it. Make it five rounds." I think I'm going Nate Diaz. You're going to go Nate Diaz? I would. I, I think he can just outlast Edwards if, if it's that long. I would love to see that though. I, again. I don't think. Leon Edwards, I mean, he hasn't really been that far. So it's going to be a test of his will and cardio. 
And that Nate Diaz has definitely been that far multiple times, so. I'm definitely, I'm rooting on Nate. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but I, I'm just like, dude, in my head, I can see Leon. I, I just see Leon kind of hurting Nate, dude. I see Leon hurting Nate. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, I'm going Leon. Um, and I feel like it's going to be a finish. Yeah. But I'm just going to say decision. I gotta give. I mean, at the very least, I gotta give Nate respect and say that it's gonna go to decision. If it's gonna be a stop, it's just gonna be like a doctor being like, "Oh, he's bleeding too much. Call it." Nate Diaz is cut because you know he's gonna get cut. <laughs> he's going to. This Nate Diaz could him. win by one punch knockout where he doesn't even get hit. He hits the other guy, and, and he's bleeding somehow out of his eyes, out of his face, <laughs> just gushing. So you're going Nate Diaz. I'm going Nate Diaz. How though? Man, I don't know. I want to say decision because for some reason I can't see him like stopping Edwards. But I mean, I guess if it goes to the ground, he could submit him. Um, but just to be safe, I'm going decision. Decision? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that's a good pick. As if I, I think if Nate wanted to be decision too. But I could also see him submitting him or late fourth round stopping Edwards. God, I would love to see that. That would be amazing. amazing. Yeah, Dude, I don't that'd, care. That'd be so good. Okay, and then the main event for the 155-pound title, lightweight title, Charles Oliveira versus Michael Chandler. People have mm -hmm. been sleeping on Oliveira, dude. Yeah. I've been saying since Khabib left. Like, honestly, before he even fought Gaethje, I've been saying, dude, he's the black horse of the division. Like, nobody's even talking about him, but he's like – stoppage win after stoppage win after stoppage win after stoppage win and it's like he's got when it comes to striking just fundamentally sound like he does the fundamentals and he does them well and then the ground game dude he dominated tony ferguson so all around monster mm -hmm. the man's a monster right yes then you have michael chandler who again i've been going on and on about him yeah. before he came in ufc People were like, oh, he's a Bellator guy. He's not going to go far. Oh, he's I'm like, what does that mean? What does that matter? Yeah, I know. He was a champ in Bellator, you know? And he comes over and starches Dan Hooker, something mm -hmm. that Paul Felder couldn't do, something that Dustin Poirier couldn't do. Like, starch Dan Hooker. Mm -hmm. um, I'll say when this fight was first announced, my immediate thought was Oliver's going to be champ. Like, I immediately thought, like, I, I thought Oliver was going to be champ. But the more I think about it, I'm like, dude, Chandler trains like yeah. a beast. He does. And I got to go for Chandler. And he man. also has a hype train behind him. Like, yeah. It, it's scary. I got to go. I got to go with Chandler. Especially if he comes out smile, smiling like he did against uh, mm -hmm. Dan Hooker. Get that relaxed, happy Chandler in there. Chandler could That's scary. finish Oliver. Yeah, he could. I know. And he's got the power. I see it. Oliver has definitely got height and reach. At though. first, I was going with Chandler, but now, more than I'm thinking about it, I'm going with Oliver. Now you're switching it up, huh? Mm -hmm. So we've we both just swip swap. Yeah. Oof. I think he submits Chandler. You think he submits Chandler? Mm -hmm. I don't think he. I could see that too, dude. Just bang with Chandler. That's how I thought he was gonna. That's I, how I thought when I first heard this. I was like, oh man. I think he's just gonna immediately try to take him down and submit him. Yeah. My whole thing is, I feel like Chandler is hard as fuck to take down. Yeah. Imagine trying to take down Chandler because yeah, no. he's short for the weight he's class short and he's and stout. just stout as hell. That boy is corn fed. I <laughs> man, I don't know. <sighs> That's is a it? fun fight. Yeah, it is. I would love to just see a five round war, dude. You know, like all these fights, I'd love to see it go to decision. But I think Chandler, and I think again, he's gonna catch him with some kind of leaping in technique. You know how yeah. he had that leaping in left hook on Hooker. I think he's going to leap in and catch Oliver with something that hurts him and and finishes him. I'm going in Chandler TKO round three. But if he comes out firing on all cylinders, he could get that first round knockout. He could. I know. I keep wanting to say Chandler. I probably should go with my gut, but I had that for some reason saying Oliver. See, I'm, I'm doing the opposite. I'm I'm like, go, my gut kind of says Oliveira, but my mind, I'm like, come on, man. Chandler, Chandler wins this. Then we get Chandler versus Dustin Poirier. And we get a good-ass fight, you know. 
That'd be good. So you're going Oliveira submission win one I'm round. I'm going uh, Oliveira submission win. Oh, no. Mm. It's hard because like you want to give Chandler respect and yeah. be like, dude, it ain't gonna be a quick one. But at the same time, when you get in round three, four, or five, they're so guy dang sweaty. It's like you can barely even hold on to a submission. So. Uh -huh. I don't know. Because I wanted to say round one, but I don't see it ending in round one. I'll give Oliveira submission win round two. Oliveira submission win round two. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, that's a good pick, too. I like that. Oof. So, those are our picks for those two cards. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else to add? No. No? It's going to be fun. It, May 15th, that, yeah, fun. I know. That's all I'm thinking about. And then obviously, I think the the winner of that is going to fight the winner of uh, DP Connor three. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, without a doubt. I know I had a weird uh, I don't even know what it was imagery or just thought process, but I thought Nate would win this one, then Connor would win that one, and they'd face each other. Somebody but, like put a Facebook post or yeah. Tweet but then them. I was like, no, that one had happened. Then I was like. Nate would win this. Connor would lose. Then they would fight. If Nate then loses, if Nate wins this, they're probably gonna immediately yeah. try to make that Usman, yeah. Nate fight. If if Leon wins this, they should probably make the Leon. Probably whoever wins this is fighting Usman, just because. Usman but yeah, but then you have like Gilbert Burns versus Wonder Boy. Yeah. And I've, I I want to see Wonder Boy and Usman fight so bad. Oh yeah, me too. That's a fight that like needs to be made at that weight class. Like we've been saying, I feel like if he beats Ed, uh, if Tyron, not Tyron, if Usman beats Stephen Warren Thompson, I feel mm -hmm. like he's the uh, welterweight goat. The goat, because yeah. that means he's beat the best striker in that weight class. No, yeah, I, yeah, because the only other threats besides you know Wonder Boy right now are like all rematches. Mm -hmm. Leon Edwards would be a rematch. Chloe Covington would be a rematch. Gilbert Burns would be a rematch. Rematches don't always sell that well, so from the UFC standpoint, they're like, doesn't sell well. Usman is like, dude, it's not building my legacy. I'm yeah. beating a guy I've already beat. Like, it's, especially if you've already beat them, it's like, it's kind of a lose-lose. You knock out Burns again, and it's like, well, I've already knocked him out one time, so nobody says it. You know, it's not going to make these huge headlines unless it's some crazy knockout. And then if you lose, uh, you know, so it's like, and you risk losing yeah. to the guy you beat. Um But either way, I think Leon, the way <coughs> Leon and Nate gets, uh, bless you. Maybe. I think the winner of Leon and Nate gets. They, I mean, they could they could get either the winner of the Burns and Wonder Boy, or they could be up there at top contention. Mm -hmm. I just don't think, like, Leon Edwards, not a lot of people respect that name. Mm -hmm. Even the UFC, I feel like they don't respect that name. He tried to do that whole, he was, like, when he was, like, holding out, he said, like, why would I fight Wonder Boy? He's too old. And then the UFC just, like, I think they, like, kind of, like, pump faked him. They, like, they were like, all right, you're cut. And then he's, like, Hey, yo, Wonder Boy, how's that, you know, yeah. want to fight? Okay? Yeah, and then at that point, they already made Wonder Boy and, like, Luke Vicente. Then, didn't, the, didn't they do the same thing with him and, uh, what's it called? Chameet? Oh, yeah. 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 They're like, oh, you're cut again. Oh, uh, Kamsak? Yeah. Kamsak. Kamsak? Kamsak. Yeah, Kamsak. Kamsak. Um, yeah, they, <laughs> they tried to do the same thing with him, too. Uh, dude, honestly, I think the winner of this gets Luke Vicente, now that I think about it. Or Jorge Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal or Luke Vicente is going to be in there. I still want to see Jorge Masvidal and Luke Vicente fight, but, I mean, let's be honest. Jorge Masvidal has to wait at least six months before he can even yeah. – or six weeks. Six weeks before he can even train. So he's probably going to get the winner of that fight, of Leon Edwards and Nate Diaz, since the fights are right around the same time. I agree. I don't know. Either way, 170 is starting to get pretty fun. It is, it is. It's getting fun. It's just like for Kamaru because he's so dominant. Like, who is going to be the challenger for him? That brings something different to the table. I have a weird feeling that Nate Diaz, and this could be totally wrong, but I feel like Nate Diaz could beat Usman. You think so? Yeah. Oh my God. I don't, know, I don't know why, but I feel like his cardio just outlasts Usman. I hate to be this guy, and because I'm like such a Diaz fan, yeah. so. I I don't like Andy Diaz slander. I do not tolerate that in this household. Diaz is a man. You don't slander. But I'm about to slander this man. Dude, 
nobody's chin holds up forever. And I also couldn't see him getting knocked out by this man. Don't I, get me wrong. I see these like, men uncorking the right yeah. and knocking him out. Jorge Masvidal's never been knocked out. Yeah. Look what Jorge Masvidal did to Nate. Yeah. Look what could possibly But also, happen. Jorge was taking shots and didn't take him seriously. He then took a bomb and said, oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was. He was not yeah. respecting the straight. But then again, Nate Diaz doesn't respect anything. So it's like he keeps his hands low. Like you watched in that fight, he took yeah. all of Conor McGregor's straights, you know? Yeah. Which is something, I mean, it's good. That's awesome that Nate was able to take that. It's just like a lot, his fight style is taking a lot of damage to the head. And I'm like, dude, that adds up eventually. You become Chuck Liddell. <laughs> That's true. You know, you get rocked by a strong breeze. And I'm not trying to watch Nate go out like that. Mm -hmm. I just feel like he's so long and lengthy. He'll keep him at bay. So then those men will be like, all right, I got to take him down. Take him down. Then he gets submitted. I mean, I would love that. Yeah. Me too. Don't get me wrong. Nate Diaz's 170 champ would rock the world. <laughs> yeah. like, that would be insane. They bet. How? A brother comes back at 185, becomes 185 champ. That would be sick. Double brother champ. Let's go. That would be awesome. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. I think Nick is coming back at 170. So they're going to be in the same weight class. Yeah, so. I heard Nick and Jorge wanted to fight. I don't know if that's true. It's either going to be Nick Versus, I guess we could discuss some UFC news. It's either going to be Nick Diaz versus Jorge, or it's going to be Nick Diaz versus um, Kamzat. Those are oh, the, I've heard that too. Those are the yeah. two that they've been talking about. And a lot of people have been like, this is the only one I want to see, but this is from the fans. It's not from the UFC. It's Robbie Lawler. They're saying make the rematch Ooh, of Robbie Lawler. That'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah, and we haven't seen much of Robbie Lawler besides, like... He's been I mean, he's yeah, kind he's of been, been losing, losing, unfortunately. Um... So that's one piece of news. This is Nick Diaz's return. Another piece of news, TJ Dillashaw is out of the fight with Corey Sandahagen. Yeah. From he got headbutt head butt in yeah. training. Uh, it's like, why? I mean, just grappling I hard. Just probably just too hard. hard. Yeah. I mean, you already know, dude. Dude trains like a monster. Dude trains insane. I was just, I was looking forward to his return. I'm not really rooting on the guy because of why he went out. You know, because yeah. being caught for cheating is kind of sucky. Um... But I do want to see that fight. I think they're just going to try to reschedule that fight. It might be just pushed back a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's another piece of news I was trying to think of, and I can't remember right now. Pizza. Pizza? Pizza news. I don't think there's any pizza news in the UFC. It's pizza time. Pizza. Um, Derek Lewis is most likely going to fight in Ghana, they're yeah. saying. And... Derek Lewis saying it's going to be different from the first one. He said five rounds is too much, and he just expects a brawl. So that'd be. He expects coming out swinging and banging. Who do you see winning that fight yeah. between Francis and Derek? I don't really know. I don't want to see either of them get knocked out. I don't want to see the guy lose. I don't lose. want to see either lose. I'll be honest with you. It would make me more sad than watching Stipe get knocked out by Francis. Yeah, it would. Um, my I want. I not only do I want, but I feel like I need Derek Lewis to be champ at some point yeah. in time. But the way uh, Francis looked against Stipe, dude, I think I gotta go with Francis. Yeah. I think I just gotta go with Francis. I mean, he's a machine, been working in the yes. lab. Derek Lewis has been working too. Don't get me wrong, but Francis has been in the lab, son. I'll probably go Francis, too. Yeah. But like you said, I want and need Derek Lewis to win. Yeah. At some point in time. At some point yeah. in time. He has to be champ. Need him in there. Because, you know, he won the first fight yeah. by decision. Derek Lewis did. Um, but. But I don't know. He said he's going to come in there swinging and banging. So, like, that's going to have to change up Nagano's whole style. Because with Stipe, he was more selective. Yeah. If Derek Lewis is just wild, you know, one hit. And I mean, one hit from either guy, though. Yeah. Francis could be going back on the left foot. You could. Because didn't he catch Stipe going back? He, he, he. No. Francis hit Stipe, right? Yeah. Then Stipe countered, like, you know, Francis yeah, coming forward. Stipe countered, rock stunned him. Then Stipe came on and, and, uh, and kind of hit him. And, and. But that's kind of what I meant was like Stipe was coming into oh, it. Yeah. 
Because, I mean, that'd be interesting. When have you ever seen somebody, like, pressure and gone in? Yeah. If Derek could just rush him, I mean, obviously. Uh, yeah, anybody's going to say, well, oh, just rock his shit. Yeah. You know, if you could just rush him and tag him, yeah, obviously that works, that's for every fight. But I'm saying if he could rush him and maybe even get in the clinch and work against the fence some, yeah. like, tire him out. Well, the only thing is, it's like he's not just tiring out Francis. He's tiring out himself, <laughs> for sure. And then you're just going to have a slop fest. Yeah. Then it's gonna be you're like gonna have two time. tired boys, two very big tired boys. Mm -hmm. I'm going Francis winning that fight, but I want Derek. I'd yeah, love to see Derek win. But no. so that's the UFC news. That's all I got for UFC news. Yeah, me too. Um, so thanks for tuning in this week for Fight Talk. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And thanks for listening to Ramblin' Rays. Peace out. <laughs>